Here, let's talk about the second real-world application on the inflationary effect. We're going to focus on the wages, and you would find that this discussion could be very useful for the rest of your life. No matter you're going to work for a company or you're going to hire someone working for you. Okay? The only difference is you're going to sit on the different sides of the negotiation table. So here, um, let's get real wage and nominal wage defined in the first place. Um, the nominal wage means uh, it's measured in current dollars. The real wage means it's measured in the dollars of the given reference base year. Okay? Again, here the key uh, is still the base year. Okay? And um, if you remember on the previous uh, slide, we talked about that general formula we gave you, right? We said the real value equals nominal value divided by a price measure and multiplied by 100%, right? Here, we're going to just use the same formula, uh, but replace, you know, these general terms with the specific ones about wages, okay? So the real wage in year I equals nominal wage in year I divided by a price measure times 100. Now here, we got to decide which price measure we would like to use. We have already at least two, right, uh, already introduced, uh, CPI and GDP deflator. So which one would be more appropriate here? Now, we would believe here we should use CPI, Consumer Price Index. The reason is that when a typical worker takes the paycheck home, he or she is going to buy consumption goods and services, right? Gasoline, food, toys, all of these consumption uh, stuff, okay? Uh, if you use a GDP deflator, that means you're going to cover a lot of investment goods or services and even for example, military goods and services, right, like missiles, tanks. But we don't expect any typical worker is going to buy that. Okay? Um, here, let me give you a real-world example okay? uh, with the makeup numbers, for sure. And uh, in this case, your yearly wage is $50,000 in 2019. In the CPI last year, uh, 2019 is 220. Now suppose that your boss and you reach an agreement that the expected CPI in 2020 is going to be 240 and your yearly wage is indexed for inflation. Now what will be your yearly wage in 2020? I'm sorry here is a typo it should be 2020. Okay, I will get it fixed uh, later. All right, now here, um, the key phrase in the question is indexed for inflation. Indexed for inflation means your boss agreed to give you a pay raise, but the pay raise is just going to be enough to protect you from inflation. In other words, your real living standard is not going to be improved because of the pay raise. Okay, so you you will, you're going to receive more money. Okay, but the extra money you received would just help you keep up with the increase in the overall price level. Okay, now here let's figure out how are we going to um, get your yearly wage in 2020. Okay, these are the examples. I'm going to come back and talk about it later. All right. So the first thing we need to do 
is to figure out the real wage in 2019. Okay. Remember, we said that we're going to use nominal wage in 2019 divided by the CPI, the price measure in 2019, multiplied by 100%, right? And here, the nominal wage in 2019 on the previous slide is $50,000, okay? That's a number on your paycheck. And the CPI last year was 220, okay? multiplied by 100 percent okay and here you would find that the uh, real wage in 2019 is going to be 22,727 dollars okay uh, we round up the number here all right and uh, once we find the real wage in 2019, we should be easy, uh, should be uh, pretty easily find the real wage in 2020. We're going to see that these two guys are equal. In other words, the real wage in 2020 will stay at the level of 22,727. Okay? Now we know this because again on the previous slides we the question already said that you know your wage is going to be indexed for inflation. Okay? All right. Now uh, the last thing we will do is to figure out your nominal wage in 2020. Nominal wage in 2020. Now, what we need to do is to, you know, if you go back to the previous uh, steps we already finished, what we need to do is to move the price measure to the left hand side, okay, and then divide it by 100%. So we're doing real wage in 2020 multiplied by the CPI in 2020 divided by uh, this 100%, okay? Now, you would find that the real wage in 2020 is 22,727, and the expected CPI in 2020 is 240, okay? And then divided by 100%. Finally, we're going to get... Um, Fifty-four thousand five hundred forty-five. So this is going to be your nominal wage for the year 2020. Okay. In other words, compared to the previous uh, year 2019, you're going to receive four thousand five hundred forty-five dollars more. However, your standard of living doesn't change. So these extra $4,545 just help you uh, keep up with the increase in overall price. Okay? It's just enough to protect you from inflation. All right. Now here, let's switch back to um, the previous slides here. And... Um, uh, several things I want to see. The first one is, it looks like that, you know, the calculation is very straightforward. Okay? That makes us think about, you know, in the real world, why the labor union and the employers keep fighting year by year. If it's just this simple, then they just do the math and figure out, you know, how much raise they, the workers are, are supposed to get, right? If you follow the economic news, oftentimes the negotiation between the labor union, for example, the United Auto Workers, UAW, and these uh, major automakers um, always made 
the headlines, economic headlines, right? Because they always, you know, have the pretty uh, tough debate. Okay? Now, the reason here is if we come back and look at these numbers we just got, you would find that you know, the, your wage in, in 2019 is already printed on, on the paycheck, right? You already received that money. So that's a fact. That's something you cannot change. The CPI in 2019 was reported by the government. That's another fact which you cannot change. Look at the third number we used. The expected CPI in 2020 is 240. This number is an expected number. So these can be quite different between the two sides of the negotiation table. Okay, So the labor union always wants a higher number okay, as an expected CPI so that they would be better protected uh, from inflation. And uh, the employers always want a lower number so that they can pay less to their workers, all right? But in reality, the government is not responsible for providing this uh, expected number. So you won't find in any government agencies or websites, like there's an official estimate of the expected CPI for 2020, okay? Um, there are many uh, institutions, companies, especially these consulting firms, they will publish their own estimation. Okay? But again, there could be a wide discrepancies among these. Okay? So that's the first point I wanna, I wanna uh, bring up to your attention. Okay. The second one is there are lots of examples out there. Okay. For example, uh, social security benefits, federal income tax brackets, and indexed CD. All of these are uh, so-called indexed for inflation. So you are well protected from inflation. Okay. Uh, another thing we would like to discuss here is a minimum wage. Should minimum wage be inflation adjusted? Okay. Uh, remember, back in Chapter 6, we already discussed the minimum wage. But over there, I already told you that we have not yet finished our discussion of the minimum wage. Okay. Back in Chapter 6, our discussion would probably give you the impression that the minimum wage is not a good idea. Okay. And as we said, it could be economically stupid, but politically smart. Okay. Uh, minimum wage, the only thing it will do for the labor market is to create more unemployment, right? It doesn't create even one more job. It simply redistribute the wealth among the poor workers. So in Chapter 6, minimum wage does not sound like a good idea. Now here, when we think about the effect of inflation, when we assume that the minimum wage is already in place, should it be inflation adjusted? We're going to talk about that in the next video.